Ben, welcome to the show, Your Worship. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. No, not a problem. Mate, just before we get on to what I've just been talking about, is it all settled down now? Yeah, yeah, we're all good now. Uh, my new chief executive's hit the ground running, so um, she's making some fantastic progress, and um, we're all getting along around the council table, so it's all, all tickety-boo now, which is great. <clears throat> That's nice, isn't it? Was the problem just quietly? Was it just what, as soon as the, chief, the last chief executive walked out of the out of the council? Was that, was that the end of all the tension? Uh uh, no, I think I think we I think we started to come together as a council before that. Um, we we spent a lot of time kind of uh, talking to each other and learning how each other works to to settle um, a lot of that drama. Um, but it, it definitely has been has been nice with our with our new chief executive and just bringing in that um, new change. I must okay. say. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, she had a bit of an unfortunate and rocky start. Uh, most of New Zealand won't know this, but you've been keeping the sprinklers on during the cold weather and it's frozen your roads yeah 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 not the um not the greatest but uh ultimately the team has realized their mistake and then sprinklers off so easy fix um i wish we got to it a bit sooner but that is life and we'll learn from our mistakes mm. although as you're a monopoly at least you won't be held accountable for it ben oh i suppose you are you will be next year when you stand um, for council uh, right uh, rate payers definitely hold us accountable for mistakes like that. Don't you worry. We have, we have Facebook, we have emails, they let us know. Yeah, well, and that's fair enough. Actually, I'll come to that but later on because it was another refrain. It was it led TV1 News last night about the insults uh, and about the aggression that is being directed towards local councils at the moment. How so many people are so upset about it. I'll come to that in a second. First of all, 21.4%. I'm sorry, mate. That's beyond the pale, isn't it? Uh, it was was incredibly hard to stomach um, and and tough to to pass it on to our ratepayers. But ultimately, what we're looking at is the, the three eyes: so um, inflation, insurance, uh, and interest. So uh, the, the the establishment before me um, did a whole lot of spending over COVID. Um, we've got a brand new library. We've got a whole lot of really nice amenities. Ultimately, that comes at a cost of debt, um, and you've got to pay interest on that. So that's that's what's really stung us. Um, we we only really had about four percent to play with. Um, eighteen percent of that is stuff we we largely couldn't control. Okay, it, and this is where I sort of start to push back because I think every mayor, uh, including our own chairman of our regional council, with the same same thing. And I always say, so why aren't you cutting your staff? Because that's your biggest expense. Everybody else is uh, making staff redundant if they're not making any money. Uh, why is the Gore District Council and every other district council and city council run away from cutting staff to cut your cloth? So we, we did we did cut staff. So there are a number of um, staff positions that uh, no longer exist. Uh, but ultimately, we, we run on the smell of an oily rag as is. And I know that's a cliche that all, all local governments use, but we, we don't have a whole lot of fat to trim in terms of staff. Um, it is our biggest our biggest cost for eroding in three waters, like like the ministers already talked about this morning. It's those big infrastructure projects. That's where your where your money is. Whether you're cutting a salary of you know sixty seventy k, that that's nothing. You know, when one percent is is quarter of a million dollars. Mm, but um, you're also very small, and the minister did talk about that this morning as well. Uh, and you are surrounded by smaller councils. There's Clutha on one of your borders, I think, the Clutha District Council, which makes no sense to me at all. Um, then there's the Southland District Council and Bacargill's got its own council. Uh, then you've got a Southland Regional Council overlaying that. Are you over-governed? I don't, I don't think we are. Um, you know, Southland, Southland is one of the biggest districts uh, in the country, uh, and and Clutha is also up there as well. So those are those are massive ge- geographical uh, areas. Uh, we are we are a small district. There's no no secret about that. Uh, and to be completely honest, I have had a conversation with the minister of is, is, if there's a better way that we could do this, would he be open to it? Um, so we've we've had that conversation too. But it's it's a hard conversation to bridge with our community. We we like our representation. They'd like to be able to hold us accountable. And like you said, with the sprinklers, be able to email in and come and see me and that sort of thing. That becomes a lot harder to do when, when you're not back with, with bigger councils. You've got a lot of lot of bigger area. Um, so you lose that representation. But that, that's a that's a conversation we've got to continue to have with the community to find efficiencies potentially. Yeah, well, you see, it just strikes me though there are obvious efficiencies, particularly in senior and middle management. You could have one chief executive, for example, 
instead of, what, five or six. You've got a whole series of senior managers, ditto. Um, you've got, I guess you do your own wages, so you don't share that amongst your other five councils. You've probably got one IT system for you as well. I mean, there must be economies of scale, uh, Ben, with other Southland and regional councils in that area. Yes, uh, it, it looks like that on the surface. And when you start to dig a little bit deeper, I mean, amalgamations are great in the short term. You save, a, you save a whole heap of money in the short term. But over time, they start to bloat out again. You know, you've got more rate payers and you, you're hiring more managers and then it, it, the, the organisation still grows. But it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, it's just because local government's got a cost plus mentality. I mean, can't, and, and that's the other thing I'd like to point out to you. You've just appointed somebody to your um, chief executive role who again comes from the local government sector. There are nobody coming in from the private sector into those local government senior manager roles. Um, and yet they would bring perhaps a much better understanding of customer focus and also of effectiveness and efficiency as a result of doing so. It's one of the problems that you've become an almost a monastic order, do you think, in local government? Mm, that's a good question. I, I, I don't think you know. I mean, I, I look at uh, Far North, who have also got a new chief executive, and, and, and their rate, rate rises um, significantly low with some big changes in there. Ultimately, our, our chief executive hasn't had the chance to make that sort of um, impact just yet. Um, it's It's... Two-sided coin, right? You've got, yes, you can bring a different perspective and that, that business acumen um, from the, the private sector, but also at the same time, there's a lot of um, technical jargon and the way that local government operates and the slow-paced nature of it that that also you have to juggle as well. You know, bringing, bringing non-local government people into this world is also quite, quite a... So it's, it's two sides of, of the same coin, really. Yeah, well, they're not stupid, though. I mean, I, to be perfectly honest with you, I mean, you're bad. You, you didn't know anything about local government. You're mayor. Two years later, you're in charge. I mean, how hard can it be? 